Welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Worldwide Willis. This podcast is brought to you by the LMG Podcast Network. Now, it's review season. As we know on the main channel, we've been doing a lot of reviews. But as you know on this channel, anytime there's a PLE, we got to review it. And today we're going to be reviewing Backlash in France, France, wherever they want to say it. Um, but, of course, I got my guys with me. Uh, Pat, what up, man? What's going on, man? Glad to be back. Uh, as always, it's always a fun time on this show. Except when you guys start cornering me and ganging up <laughs> on me. Other than that, as always, back by popular demand. The one, the only, Mr. Hot Take himself, P A. T. It's gonna be a good show, fellas. I, I feel good about this one. Uh, got a little fat, man. <laughs> Hell, what up, man? What's up, man? I'm I'm just ready to hear this dude's take, even though we quote unquote corner him and right be mean to him. Yeah, he actually like, like that. Um, you know, Hulk Hogan on the video games where he put like eight black wrestlers against Hulk Hogan. Yeah, just to be beating the dog out of him. Yeah, he act like we do that. Which is not the case, but fight back. <laughs> um, but yeah, those we had backlash in France uh, this past Saturday, and um, yeah, basically we're just gonna go through the card and um, and break things down. Now, I do want to ask you guys, what are your thoughts on the crowd? How do you think the crowd was in this particular event, Pat? I, I feel like you'll have an opinion either way. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, th- one of the things that you and I agree on with us is that the crowd sometimes helps slash hurts the match. So if it's like yeah. a really good match, but the crowd's not really into it, it feels like it's a dud. And then, yeah. but just basically like you and I are always, I feel like you, we always talk about crowds and we tend to agree how on, yeah. on crowds and if they're trash or not. This one, they were hot. They were into everything. But I also feel like that was the problem with them is that they were popping for everything. And there's yeah. some stuff that was just like, I don't, that wasn't like some of the matches after the match. I was like, that felt really energetic and the crowd was into it. But I don't know if it was a good match. I just feel like the crowd was into it just to be into it. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. I can feel that. Yeah. Hell, what'd you think? I kind of feel kind of the same way. Like, for example, like the Jay and Damian match, mm-hmm. that was on fire. Yeah, I like the crowd in that aspect. But when it came to Cody and AJ, it was just a little too much. Yeah, it was distracting. And the same thing, kind of with the women's triple threat match. Yeah, same. Like we all know when when you go over there to the UK or anywhere you know on that side of you know the globe. Everybody loves Bailey. Right. So it's just like, I already knew that whole match was going to get hijacked. Yeah. Facts. So it's just like, it was sometimes it was too, it was a little bit too much. Yeah. Yeah. That I, crowd I agree. was fire though. <laughs> no, it was, it was amazing to see. Like, I love seeing a crowd that like is thirsty for wrestling. You know what I mean? Like, they, they don't get it often. They get it once a year, maybe once every two, three years. You know what I mean? They get the European tour, but it's never really televised. It's usually live events. So I appreciated that fact. And like you said, like some of the some of the like the entrances, oh, top tier. Like yeah, I, give me that all day. Um, especially like Jay's and, and Cody's and Randy's, you know what I mean? Um, uh, so many great ones. But during the match, I, I don't need a sing along. Like, I, I just don't – that's not – and maybe that's a custom – that's a culture thing, but, like, this ain't soccer. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to have low moments to then have high moments. We can't just be rocking the whole time. They got somebody in a, in a headlock. Oh, oh, we're going crazy. You know what I mean? Like, it was just like – and it, like, even in the first match when it was a street fight, like, Kevin Owens was like – he just punched Solo. The crowd went crazy. Punched him again. crowd went crazy. I was just like – Okay, like I get the excitement, but it's just like wow, like we're doing like Puerto Rico was perfect last year. Puerto Rico Puerto popped Rico when nice. you need to pop, but they wasn't like doing the whole sing along during the match. Like they was just they was just watching the match. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um so yeah, it was yeah. it was and they, 
Go they ahead. had that whole thing. They had that whole thing when they would get a two count. And they started yeah. some like chant with that. And yeah, was, like, it would start a whole new song. And it was just like, <laughs> bro, if I was a wrestler, I'd be like, hey, man, we're not doing any false counts. <laughs> yeah. Do it. We'll cut out all them false counts we talked about. Yeah, we're doing the, the final count is the final count because I, I can't deal with this anymore. Like, I couldn't do it. Uh, like, if I was AJ, I'd be pissed. Boy, oh, every time he phenomenal. did something that. Uh, uh, da, 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 yeah, yeah. So apparently, like, anytime you say phenomenal. There's a chant. I don't know if it's soccer, or like one of their sporting things. Like, there's a chant that goes along with phenomenal. So, anytime anybody said phenomenal, the whole crowd started breaking out into that. Like, yeah. or anytime he did chant. anything, they were right. doing that. Like, right. I, at first, I was like, okay, that's cool. And I was like, okay, no, they're doing that anytime he makes a move. Yeah. 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 If, if yeah, if I was AJ, I'd be a little upset just because they had, they, and we'll talk about the quality of the match, but like, it definitely felt like it was a distraction. Like, I could barely, not like I could barely focus on the match, but, like, I had to think about the crowd the whole time, which I don't want to do. Like, I, you know, that's great when they're positive, uh, net positive for it, but, like, it was like, oh, man, like, intros, they're, like, singing along and stuff, and it was just like, oh, okay, this has nothing to do with the match you're watching. This is just, y'all just having a good time. It's like, all right, hey, when this show's over, go to the bar, have a good time, brother. Do your thing. But at this particular show, I don't need you, you know, <laughs> like jumping around. They were they were trying to get uh get that ticket to WrestleMania, what, 42? Yeah, they they was hard. They was, <laughs> they was like, oh, this is a this is you know an audition. Okay. Yeah, they was thirsty, bro. I was like, Man, bro, y'all not they if they do it overseas, which I'm a, apparently they're going to it might to, be but, London. Yeah, it's probably gonna be London. Um, but that's that's also going to be annoying. Um, but yeah, again, like I, I feel like people are going to be like, man, we listened to the podcast before and you guys said the crowd were bad and now this one was too good. Like, you guys need to figure something out. And it's like, yeah, we want the crowd to be into it, but we want them to know what they're getting into. Like, don't pop to right. pop. Exactly. Pop for the stuff that the wrestlers are trying to make you pop for. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, don't like... Also, it's like you're singing a song just to be sometimes singing a song. Yeah. And my thing is like, it's not like this is a country that's like Saudi Arabia. Wrestling isn't historically like a thing there. You know what I mean? Like that most people there haven't watched a live wrestling event that many times, right? France right. Is, has historic, you know, they were talking about Andre the Giant being from France and they have many different people from France. They've had live matches there. So it just felt like, man, y'all haven't. But I mean, I could say the same thing about London. So, um, like Pat said, like I get it. It's a it's a U.S. preference. Like we prefer a little more. We prefer Chicago and New York, where it's like, if we pop in, you know, you earned that pop. Well, you know, you, you, you know, you did something special for us to pop. You know what I mean? And that's just my preference. Now I know some people. I saw a lot of people on Twitter. They loved it. Loved every bit of it. It's great. I'm sure people like it. And they, again, the entrance is classic. Like that that Jay Uso entrance was amazing. But after that, it was like, uh, I don't know. But like, um, I, I felt like I felt like I was okay until that main event. I mm-hmm. think that's what got me. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I think it was for the Damian Priest Jay Uso match. For me, mm-hmm. it's like their stuff in there were like they were popping, and I was like. This 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 is not where you need to be popping. Like, just go ahead and sit on your hands. Like the triple threat. Like, no offense. Like, Tiffy Stratton, she's gorgeous, very athletic. But that triple threat was not very good. We'll get into more of that later. But like, they were popping for stuff in that match. So I was like, guys, let's go go get more beer. Go to the restroom. Like, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Okay, um, to start us out, we'll start with the first match of the night which was Kevin Owens and Randy Orton uh, versus the Bloodline, Solo Sokoa and Toma Tonga. Um, uh, this this one started out crazy. I love the way it started. I really like this match overall. I thought it was pretty good. Um, started out as a brawl, which I like because we just had a brawl on SmackDown. So if they would have started out very like conventional tag team, I would have been like, what are we doing? Um, but they started out as a brawl, and then obviously – uh, the GM came out there and was like, yo, like, if y'all going to do that, let's just let's do it, uh, which I thought was great. But, um, L, what did you think about this match? I, I loved it. 
especially like what you said when Nick Aldis came out and was like, yeah. okay, y'all gonna y'all gonna really do this? Okay. We ain't gonna stop this. Y'all gonna just gonna keep on going. Right, right. And it was just all the spots, them going to the crowd. It did throw me off when Randy like lost Tamatonga. <laughs> yeah, Randy was just walking around. The whole, whole getting, just walking around like Kevin getting dog walked back there. I'm like, dang. <laughs> I was like, is this on purpose? Or he legit didn't know where he was. I le- Yeah, I think that was legit. I think Tomatonga was supposed to go in a certain spot. Tomatonga was like, eh, we'll go put Kevin Owens in a headlock. You know what I mean? Uh, in a sleeper. But, yeah, that that was only – you did distract me. Bro. Like, in all the high spots, like that brain buster that Kevin Ugh. did on them chairs, bro. that was that was – I thought he. I thought both of them got hurt off of that when I first yeah. saw that. Especially the way his arm hit the uh, KO's arm hit that chair. Yeah, but yeah. it was a lot of spots. Then you know, I don't know if you want to say this now or the debut. Yeah, of uh, Tangaloa, which yeah. honestly that threw me off. Threw me off. I was like, oh, Fatu. I was like, oh, that's gonna be Fatu. And then yeah, I thought I, I thought Fatu was gonna show up. Yeah, until I was like, wait a minute. That's the brother. Yeah. I was like, okay. I thought he still had time on his contract. Yeah. What do they call Gorillas of Destiny? Gorillas of I know it was G O D. Yeah, I think it's Taxi Manu Japan. But the that whole match, it was it was a good start up to that pay per view. Yeah, it really was. Uh got the crowd. I mean, they were already going, but if they weren't, then uh that definitely would have got him there. And I never heard a crowd sing Randy's Orton song word for word. Same, man. It is Gorillas of Destiny. Um, but, yeah, I never have either. I mean, I know for those who were voices people, hey, that was a, that was one of your cat. I get it. I don't think it's that good to be singing along with. <laughs> but And that's why no one else does it. But I get it. Like, if you haven't seen the person before, you probably love it. Um but yeah, uh, Pat, what do you think about this? Well, first off, I'm going to tell you your voices comment there. Nobody else <laughs> does it because it's a European thing to sing the songs. Like the U.S. will sing songs like yes, they'll sing Fozzie in AEW uh, or Judas in AEW. But that's because it AEW kind of triggered them to do it, like prompted them when they had Sammy Guevara out there singing it. I, the crowd was like, oh. It's a sing along now, so that's what happened. But that's mainly a European thing. That's why you don't hear anybody sing it. It's still a great song. No, you do it with Cody's, but it's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. No, nah, the, they just do the whoa. But no. people do the same thing with. No, voices. it's, it's been the times they voices. did Cody's lyrics. They did the whole. Yeah, they'll do the now, same thing with. It voices. ain't clear. They, it's all muffled it and mumbled, <laughs> like a yeah. mumble rapper. Yeah. But still. Um. Anyway. Also, again, they they've been prompted to do that with Cody's. Anyway. Uh, I thought it was a good match. I, I thought it was a good way to start. Um, I thought with the crowd, I was like, okay, they're hot for this. They're going to probably get too poppy, and now they're going to like be down the rest of the night. Mm. Obviously, they weren't. <laughs> but right. um, the debut was good because it shows like, oh, there's another member of the bloodline. now. Gonna, who's going to jump on uh, KO and Randy Orton's side to help right fight this third member now is Roman Reigns going to come back and you know try to dismantle what he built is Jimmy going to join Randy and KO there's just yeah. so many so many possibilities that again Triple H has been doing this since pretty much he took over right. continuing storylines after pay-per-views to make you tune in on Monday or Friday um, and then like you said like I'm surprised it wasn't made a stipulation before the pay per view or the yeah. PLE because of how it the build up to it, how basically KO was attacked and then Randy helped. That like that it should have from the beginning should have been a uh no disqualification or basically a street fight or whatever. But the fact that it like you said was a street fight, it actually made sense because like like we've mentioned before, you're not gonna sit there and have beef with somebody and have brawls and then just have a regular right classical match where it's just like oh, i'm gonna tag you in no like i'm going at your throat this it's right. hands on site right. so i'm glad that's how they started and how that match went yeah yeah i agree um 
it's funny with uh <laughs> Tongue of Lord. People were like, once he debuted, people started posting his stuff. You know what I mean? He's he's had some very interesting history. But I mean, Gorilla's Destiny is apparently like, like one of the I've seen a few of their matches. They're really good. Uh, obviously, part of the very like known part of the Bullet Club. They've been multiple time champions over New Japan. Uh, it did look like he kind of botched the 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 interference. Oh, he did. Uh, There's a video of behind. Yeah, and the ref basically pulled himself out. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he was late. You could tell he was late. Yeah. Um, because it's like, yeah, the yeah, damn said, yeah, bro. He was like fumbling up, and then it felt like he damn near like when the ref pulled himself out, he like pulled in more, so it made the ref land a hella awkward. Um, mm-hmm. but no, it, it was really good. Uh, good camera work. That you know, obviously, just from certain angles, you couldn't even tell. Um, uh, and it showed the face. You were like, oh, who, who. You know what I mean? It took like a couple seconds to like be like, "Who is this dude?" Because I, I didn't. And the announcers sold it perfectly. No, they did. They really did. They didn't yeah. overdo. It. Like sometimes in AEW when they have the new debuts, they'll overdo it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh, and that is that. Like, yeah. It's it's, it's 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 it. I'm like, hey, bro, spit it out. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 some random guy that we've only seen on you yeah. know uh, TNA yeah. one time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it was a really good debut. Um, like you said, I thought it, it was a great job. And I thought the MVP of the whole thing was Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman sold it to where being like, all right, I'm over this, but this is taking a totally different direction. I, and I have no control over the direction it's going. I'm going to just report back to Roman, but I have no, like, I'm basically just following around some goons now that are doing a way worse. Like when Roman was there, there was some order. Now solo, there's no order, and I have I can't do anything about it. Yeah, like yeah, like he he Paul. he haven't even talked to Roman since WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. yeah, so like that tells you like oh okay like the the you know kids running an asylum you know what I mean like solo is a different type of ruthless solo is like like Roman would beat you rub it in your face walk off solo wants to like beat you beat you up even more <laughs> after the bell you know what yeah. I mean. Um, but yeah, Paul, Paul's selling it. And like you said, like with that Jimmy, I love that little spot where Jimmy was warming up. Bloodline walked him, walked across oh, him Jay? and then Paul. Spec on yeah, his name. Or Jay. Yeah, Jay. Um, and then Paul walked by like, I don't even know what this is anymore. Bro. He's like, <laughs> like I don't wait, I don't want to talk about this. Don't don't yeah, ask me nothing right now. I don't even know what I'm doing, bro. <laughs> it just I'm just by. here, man. Yeah. <laughs> just doing my Paul job. Heyman's facial reactions in pretty much every match. Yeah. Add to the match. He really does. He's he's a genius. Like dude's a literal genius. Um, but no, really good match. Um okay, out of five, what would you guys give it? Uh what would you give it? Uh I give it a three. Ooh, okay. Okay, Pat, what do you think? I wrote three and a half, but I, I like matches like that more. I'm mainly for like the story part of it, because yeah. like they just didn't have a regular old tag team match. They actually like you know, we've been at each other's throats. Now I'm gonna beat the shit out of you with anything I can find. Yeah, right, right. <clears throat> Man, I want to do a four, but I'm gonna also do three and a half, just because I thought the match was good, but there was some predictable spots. Um, at the Randy arcade on the table, you saw that coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah just what like mean? what I would do to you in in a game. All right. now you, you had me, and I hit an RKO out of nowhere. <laughs> now you started something. <laughs> and I don't know if you're prepared to finish it. Like, I'm always prepared to finish. Um, also disclaimer: I'm taking the crowd out of my ratings just because we're gonna say it multiple times. They they pop for any and everything, so you couldn't yeah. really tell. Right, based off crowd reaction. Yeah, that's so. why I kind of watched it like twice. Yeah, I watched it on mute the second time. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, now it's question: good. After that match, when y'all saw Randy and KO go to the back, how many of y'all did, did y'all think that he was gonna turn on KO? Bro, I was like, this is about to be a Tommaso Champa. I was like, yeah, yeah, he about to throw his head into that <laughs> that interesting. <laughs> I just think they cut. I think they cut back too quick. Yeah, or just to me, you just don't show it. Like, 
if we're not if nothing's gonna come from this, don't show it. Uh, and maybe there's you know, we need one more person now. Yeah, it is basically a like, oh, okay, we're we're beat up when you know we're in defeat. Now we got to come back Monday. You know, I get it, or Friday, but yeah, it was just like I definitely thought, oh, this is about to be a Tommaso Champa type situation where <laughs> <laughs> Randy about to turn back like, into the uh... Viper. Yeah, yeah, like you gonna punt him right right here in front of the whole crowd. Um, okay. Uh, on to the next match, the triple tri- triple threat um, championship match for the women's championship. Uh, Bailey uh, def- defends her title. Oh my god, women involved. Oh, we should have known. Uh, Bailey versus Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton. I'll go first because I know I already know how Pat's going to take this. Yeah. I thought it was a solid match. I thought um, I thought the spots they set up were solid. Um, nothing crazy, but I thought it was solid. I thought they could have let Tiffany, Tiffany got to shine a little bit. I think they could have like, given her a little more time to like cook a little bit. Um, she had a little moment there where she was on the run, but uh, I think Tiffany's the best like in the ring right now of the three. I think Bailey's, you know, Bailey was there, but Bailey's kind of on the on the back end now, so she's just trying to help other people out. But um, I thought it was a solid match. Again, I, I didn't necessarily love the Naomi giving her a hug at the end. I'm like, all right, bro. Like, if you're a real competitor, like, I'm not doing that after an L. I'm just not. You can be my best friend. We not talking. Like, on the way home, we not talking. Like, it's just not going to happen. So that kind of threw me a little bit. Uh, yeah, again, we'll take the crowd out of it because we know the Bailey part. That's annoying. So I'll leave that out. But uh, I thought overall solid. I do wish that Tiffany could have got – a moonsault in or got a big spot off of because like she's the, I won't say she's the most athletic person, but she's the best at at, at spots to me. Uh, Naomi's spots are cool, but they're never really like they never wow me. Outside of a rumble, they never really wow me. They're usually like using something, whereas Tiffany's like jumping off of something, doing some stuff that men be doing. You know what I mean? So um, solid. I kind of I get why Tiffany wouldn't win, but did, did Naomi take the – Naomi did yeah, take the pin. No, okay. the pin, yeah, which was the right okay. call. I don't, which is the right call. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to give make Tiffany take the pin. Right. Um. So that was that was smart. Yeah, and that's – honestly, I think while she was in – I think she was in the match to give her a moment, obviously, to, to really pay off her coming back and things. But I think, obviously, it was for her to take that pin, eat that L. So, um, L, I'll let you go next. We know, we know where Pat's going. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Yeah, before we all get canceled. Right. Um, <laughs> I think it was solid. Now, I am going to put the crowd into this. Okay. The reason I will put the crowds into this, because a lot of spots were off because of timing, and I think it had to do with the crowd was so amped up for every single thing. Okay. Because there was sense. a lot of spots where somebody was late. Yeah. Or either it was kind of, I don't want to say botched, but it wasn't a clean move. Yeah. Like a lot of that happened during that match. Yeah. And it was too much of a, like the pace was always kind of like on and off. Like they will go, then they'll stop. Or Mm -hmm. three of them be in the ring, then it'll go like two on two. Yeah. Yeah. Then somebody get knocked out. I like it when it's more like all three of them are more consistently in the ring going at each other. I will say, I had a problem if I'm the if I was producing this match. I guess I have a problem with the produ- production of the match. When Tiffany Stratton, I think she knocked out. They're both. Oh, she did the Alabama slam right to one of them. Then did the Alabama slam to the other. To on then the table threw, spot. Yeah, on the outside. Yeah. Then then she throws them both back in to do the stupid the moonsault. I'm like, why would what smart per she's way smarter than that. She's shown she's smarter than that in matches against Becky and all kind of other people. Why would she then throw both people back into the match? So then to have to compute like anybody with a brain would have been like, Okay, I'm hit who oh Naomi? I'm gonna keep Bailey because I got Bailey down. She's probably the stronger person. Throw Naomi back in his joint. Hit it with this moonsault, one, two, three. Like, that was just, that was stupid to me. I got a rebuttal for that. 
Okay. So I I was thinking the same thing, but then I also thought about how often does a we'll go for basketball here. How often does a guy who's hit three or four threes in a row come up and heat check from deeper than he should? True. That so it, it was it's a kind of the same line of thinking. Like that person not technically is dumb, but they took a dumb shot, but also they're feeling it. They've hit three, four in a row. They don't think they can miss. Shoot or shoot. So in her mind, the logic ish behind that was I'm doing well. I got them both taken out. I'm going to go bigger than I should, and I'm going to moonsault both of them and win that way and show everybody how good I am type of thing. It, That's, it, it, it makes sense. If the announcers would have sold it that way, I'd have been like, and they oh, didn't. okay. You know, but they how, didn't mention it But how can you sell that, though? Like, to me, if I was an announcer, I'd have been like, Tiffany, what are you doing? And then if, you'd be, and then if the other guys, if Michael Cole's like, or somebody else is like, well, she's trying to she's trying to show she's the best. You know what I mean? Put it over. Now she's a trying bit. to end all of this. Yeah, exactly. Put it over a little bit. That's cool. I get that. But when you don't say anything, when a, in a triple threat match, somebody throws a third person back, like the second person back in the ring, like that's wild. Like I would have had to address that. I'm sorry. I'd have been like, whoa, whoa what are we doing? <laughs> then she got the dang one D put on her right after that. Yeah, that was fine. Oh, I damn, like that. Bro- yeah, it was, a, it was a little botchy though. Uh, oh yeah, it most definitely was. <laughs> Bailey was late. Naomi had it good. Naomi was good with it. Bailey was a yeah. little late. Yeah, yeah. And I, okay, and I'll let. Okay, uh, L. Did you have any other thoughts? I didn't like the finish. I, oh yeah, that was bad. I did not that like bad. that finish. I don't know if it was rushed. It was just me. Hmm. Didn't like the finish, and also like you said. That whole oh, I'm gonna hug you and kiss you on your cheek and yeah, your arm. No, homie, uh, uh-uh. uh, we ain't doing yeah. that. You're right, especially you beat me like that. If you hit me with the Bailey to belly, hit me with an elbow drop, then hit me with that other joint. Okay, cool. I took I took an L, but if you literally a weak reverse pin, nah, fam. I'm not speaking to you for <laughs> it. Looked like a roll up. Was it not a roll up? It was a roll up. It was like a reverse roll up. Yeah, rolled her up, then yeah, Bailey just Willis switched the position. Yeah. I say him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're mad about it. You got PTSD. But, <laughs> but I also think that's going to further a storyline there. Because just remember, it. Naomi's teeter tottering between her two girls and Bailey. Because we yeah. saw it on SmackDown when she that Bailey was trying to tag Bianca, and Bianca was like, I still ain't feeling you. Yeah. And they're they're consistent with that. Uh, we gotta talk about the Bianca attitude towards Bailey because at least she's consistent. Like she's like, I'm tired of damage control, which I understand. Like I would be tired of talking about them too. They're irrelevant at this point. Um, but all right, Pat, go ahead and cancel us because yeah. taking off. Spotify. No, I'm not gonna do that. I thought <laughs> I thought it was solid. Uh. You said like terrible said, earlier. No, I keep that no, same no, energy. Thing. I didn't say terrible. You did say terrible. I didn't say terrible. It wasn't as good. It it wasn't great, awesome, five-star, four-star, three-star even, but it was solid. It did what it needed to do. It showed what Tiffany could do. It They protected Tiffany by making Naomi uh, eat the pin. The way that she did was bad. I also don't think Bailey is champion – got enough in like that it was her yeah. first defense coming off winning at mania like you would expect her to be a lot more dominant and like yeah. yo i this i'm the champ like i'm proving why i'm the champ type of thing and then she wins on a weak roll-up like what give me yeah. a bailey to belly right and me- you beat eo with like pulling out everything you got and then you, you beat Naomi with a roll. It's kind of like, all right. It just felt like yeah. a survive type of deal. Yeah. And, like, I mean, if they wanted to keep Naomi looking kind of strong, let her kick out of the first Bailey to belly. Right. Bailey gets frustrated, hits another one. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, yeah. I, I, Naomi's like, you had to do two Bailey to bellies to pin me. Like, or something like, you know, Tiffany Stratton had to do most of it. If she wasn't there, I would have won. And then, like, you kind of build the story off of that but that and it felt like when they 
got to three, it didn't feel like anybody knew that there was a three count. Again, yeah, a lot yeah, of it was because yeah. of the crowd, because the yeah. crowd was still didn't really react to it. Um, and then I don't even think the announcer said anything, if I remember correctly. Like it was kind of silent. Yeah. Like kind of almost when Brock beat Undertaker is almost that type of like, oh, the match is over. Like, yeah. Felt kind of rushed. Or it kind of looked just like the uh, triple threat at WrestleMania with Ronda, uh, Becky, and Charlotte. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that a bad finish. I remember that. Yeah, because that was almost the same thing where it was just like a, a roll up type pin and it was it. Yeah, bro. Well, it's because Ronda fucked up. Yeah, that's true. That is true. We don't know what All happened right. with that one because that felt kind of. Be careful saying too. her name because. Yeah, you might yeah. get allegations on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Drew Gulak. I apologize. I, you know, I do want to look up Backlash match producers because, bro, I mean, I've talked about this many a times. We got to stop with the multi women on the turnbuckle suplex powerbomb combination. Like, we got to stop. That has to be outlawed. Like, yeah. this match, you know they were they were about to do it and they flipped from it. But. The only one I can see doing that would be Jade Cargo because she's or Bianca because they're the, the more powery women. Mm-hmm. Like have yeah. them at the bottom and they're right. the ones taking the person off. That's that makes sense, but or Charlotte Flair. Right. But really anybody else is not like a or I guess so you have Rhea, basically any of the power women. Raquel. Yeah, yeah Raquel, Naya, um, Rhea, Charlotte, like all them. Piper even. But like <clears throat> the rest of them don't need to be need to be doing that. Yeah, I, it just it's sense. every it's every tag. It looks match. awkward. It's, too. it's every triple thread. It's like, gosh, <laughs> and the the whole like it, it just feels like sometimes the producers are like, hey, remember that match we y'all did a year ago? We're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna do the we're gonna start the match with roll up reverse roll up. Then the other person jumps in roll up. Then another person jumps in roll. It's like, dude, we've seen this before. Like, come on, man. Like, this isn't new at all. Um, and we keep having triple threats. So it's like, like we've had, we've seen that thing a thousand times. But that's yeah, not. And I, I wonder if they're doing it because they're trying to find big spots for them to do, and that's when they be bigger spots that they know they can do without killing somebody. Yeah. Not saying not, that they're not good wrestlers. It's just like the women sometimes struggle helping each other out with those sort of bigger moves than the men do. Yeah. And like, I'm not trying to see anybody get hurt. Yeah, I get that. And I'm a, I'll kind of comment on after we talk about the Bianca and uh, Jade Buki Warriors match. But um, oh. yeah. Um, okay. Next. Oh. Let's rate these. Let's rate this match. Uh, Pat, what do you, what do you, what's your grade for this one? I'm going to be generous and give it a two and a half. Ooh, wow. You switched up. Boy. I swear you came in hot early. Uh, L, what do you think? <laughs> I'll die. Uh, they did have some good spots. I just think also if they had some more time together, mm-hmm. I think it also would have been different. Yeah. Especially – some of them were on SmackDown the night before, too. So, can we talk about the move Naomi did to Tiffany Stratton on the apron when she was oh, yeah. on her face? Yeah, and then like basically pedigreed her on the apron. Like everybody knows that's the hardest part of the war. You purposely dropping onto your kneecaps and not yeah. part of the ring. Like do something that's not gonna hurt you too. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't in love with that. Point, I, I don't know if they didn't do it right. It just didn't seem that impactful. Yeah, it didn't seem like uh, that was all the way. Right. Done. I get the effect of it. I mean, I definitely yeah. felt the effect, but uh, yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the the move quality, no. I give it a two and a half. Okay. I I was leaning to. But you guys sold me. I I agree. It was probably two and a half. Where the no, be your own person. Give it a two. It's okay. No, I, I think I think Tiff, Tiffany was what put it in a half for me. Tiffany had some moments. I wish she would have had more moments. To be honest, because I thought they had gave them a solid amount of time. It, it wasn't like 
it wasn't like this was a rushed match. You know what I mean? Like they gave them time to work. No. I just wish Bailey would have got more in. I wish like we could have got more people getting stuff in where it felt like everybody was getting random stuff, but nobody got on a real run at all or momentum. That's why I was talking about that pace. Yeah, yeah. Like Tiffany hit the I like she hit the little somersault elbow on the barricade. That was cool. But then Bailey, like an idiot, jumps out, hits uh jumps to the turnbuckle, hits uh jumps to the ropes, hits Tiffany. Then runs over. Uh, Naomi's jumped over the barricade. She's hurt. She runs over there and grabs Naomi. I'm like, are you? Do you guys not understand how a triple threat works? Like, if I was playing WWE 2K and Pat dumbass was over there in the in the in the barricades, I'm not going to grab Pat. I'm saying, okay, who who's in front of me? I just knocked down. I'm throwing you in the ring and I'm hitting you with a special. <laughs> and like, and, you know what I mean? And seeing if Pat can get to get to it and break it up fast enough. But I am not. No, like, like <laughs> whoever's well, worse off, there. you're staying there. Yeah, <laughs> like you are. If you get up, that's on your own. To it, like that's on you, buddy. I'm not helping you whatsoever. Um, like I don't know. Bailey's smarter than that. So then, like, she ran over there, tried to help her. Boom, got kicked in the face. I was like, well, that's what you get. That was stupid. Um, I didn't get that one at all. I was like, you gotta throw some logic in here. And usually under Triple H, I'll give him that. They they usually have logic as part of most of these. Um, all right, next match we have Damian Priest versus Jay Uso um, for the World Heavyweight Title. Uh, El, what do you think about this one? That entrance from Jay was fire. Yeah, absolutely. Even fire. though I need all of France to get on beat, bro. That- that, that threw me, me off at first hey. until he got hey. in the ring hey. and did that. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that got me. I was like, okay. Yeah. As a band nerd, I was like, okay, I need y'all to. I was like, y'all ain't had hip hop that long, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the match, like, that match reminded me of something you would see at a house show. Mm. But it's a high quality house show because all the crowd participation that Jay was doing especially in the beginning when he had each side of the uh, arena meeting yeah Yeah. then he couldn't do that last one until later on he wound up doing it right Um, honestly that match that was probably one of Jay's best matches against somebody to me. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Especially coming off of WrestleMania against his brother. Mm-hmm. Like, the pace was good to me. I still need Jay to have, like, at least about five more moves, though. Yeah, we got... Yeah. Like, yeah, like he, he, need to get some, bag. he need to get some, like, VC or something. No <laughs> crazy some extra set. moves or something, yeah. He yeah. Bro, he needs to go hop in the... Hop in the lab. Go watch all Samoans. Like, Samoans didn't just do Samoan drops and high kicks, <laughs> bro. Like, people did other moves. Yeah. But, I mean, he's a big guy, so, I mean, that eliminates half of those moves, but still. Right. But I'd, I'd like to... He spot. needs to go watch Umaga, because, like, he's got the... A, he got the tattoo. The, yeah. yeah. He's got the body size to do, like, semi-power, but also semi-high flying. Yeah. But like I said, like the match had some good pace to it. Crowd was hype. Um, now the only thing that has me like wondering is that interference. Mm, I like that part of it. I really like that the part story. was like, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Especially the way he like just mushed both of them, Jay yeah. and Finn. Yeah. I was like, okay, real Rhea's away. Okay, I'll go best round break up before she come back. Right, right. But the match I, was good, though. I like that South of Heaven from that top rope. That was fire. That was fire. I, I've, I've grown to like the South of Heaven, especially when he did it at the – the best one I seen him do was at the WrestleMania. When he did it on uh, Drew. Yeah, on Drew. I was like, ah, okay. That seems – and because it always felt like, is that a signature or is that a finisher? Like, I couldn't yeah. tell – 
what what he was doing because he would do the you know the uh, the Scott Hall you know what I mean the Razor's Edge right the Razor's, Razor's Edge. Edge that looks good too so I was like okay I don't know which one is you're saying is better I don't know you gotta let me know so then I can react accordingly uh, but South of Heaven was dope that was dope um, all right Pat what do you think uh. We gotta have a better move set. It's almost yeah. kind of like predictable issue. Yeah, you knew Finn and JD were gonna get involved. It's just kind of a matter of when and how. Um, but I like that he didn't like them doing that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, but also it's like he hasn't really said that he's like wants to be a good guy. Like, why is he all of a sudden not wanting? People to. I mean, he's, like his he said he's he trying to prove himself. Yeah, uh, he that's, right. that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Anyone wants to uh, prove he's the guy now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. I remember that now. Um. But yeah, like you knew that was going to happen, even though he's not wanting it. Um. But I mean, the pacing was good. The it did kind of feel like El said like it felt like a, gl- a glorified house show. Match, mm. which I feel bad for Jay because they're promoting him as main event Jay Uso, and he's like the one to me. His best main event match has been against Roman. Oh, hands down, yeah. Where he was like he, like, you could tell and feel the story he was telling. Mm. These other ones, he's trying, but it's just like he, he's not quite getting there yet. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, He's had some good matches against Gunther, but I mean, that, you kind of count. You can't really count that. It's Gunther. So. I think he was fading into that crowd more. Yeah. In this one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think the crowd kind of got to him. Like, someone should have told him before we went out there, like, hey, man, they're going to pop for any and everything. So, yeah. like, don't try to, don't worry about making them pop. Just do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really like the false finishers. Like I thought, I didn't. I won't think he was gonna win, but like when he hit the the uh, splash off the top rope, like that was really cool. Like it was some really he got to, he got to show his stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, which is really nice. Um, and Damian Priest again. Damian Priest is pretty consistent. Like he's showing up pretty well. Um, I thought it was a pretty good match. I mean, like you said, I think it was one of it, one of Jay's better one on one matches, not including Roman Reigns. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I've been excited about that, and, and I'm glad he. And he, I mean, he expressed. We kind of talked about the WrestleMania match, how disappointing that was, and he's talked about how he thought it was disappointing. Um, he kind of mentioned how he, I guess their time got cut short, or whatever. But uh, yeah, uh, but I am excited to see him. You know, in this pursuit for a singles title, probably end up being more intercontinental level to start. Um, uh, but if he was to be the champ, it'd probably be a Damian Priest rather than a, you know, because we want to go out there get that thing. Sorry, buddy. Like, you ain't seeing that. You ain't winning that thing for another year or two, you know. Do you think he yeah. should go away from the Ute stuff? Like, I know it's gotten over and he's like the whole crowd's involved with it. But should he get it a little more serious with it? I'm not I, saying he's I, not I, serious with the Yeet, but like. It's almost just become a not comedy act, but just like it's become an act more so of like, like I don't feel like this guy's gonna come out and whoop my ass. I feel like he's gonna come out and the crowd's just gonna sit there and move their hands, and depending where they're where they're at, they're gonna be off beat. But, um, <laughs> right, you know, it's I'm, more so just that rather than like fuck, I'm, I'm about to get my my ass kicked here. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's like a Big E situation. Like Big E sometimes would take you to like way too far. You know what I mean? Where you couldn't even take him serious as much. I think yeah. this is more of like he just got he gotta just get better. He gotta try different stuff. He gotta make it to where his 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 matches aren't just a formulaic super kick, super kick. You know what I mean? Small drop, splash. You know what I mean? He gotta step it like now that you're main event, now we can poke holes at your game. So you gotta you gotta mix it up yeah. a little bit. You know? Yeah, I think he's gotta really Sell it, sell his matches with his promos. Yeah, yeah, you gotta like get, I think you gotta get better at promos too. Yeah, like I, like I also think that this was possibly a bad example of mm. what you're talking about, Pat. 
it's yeah. that seriousness and the the eating like that whole match i haven't never seen it like that much before like that yeah, yeah. and that's why i said i think he was playing to that crowd being so hot for him yeah the whole time that's why i was like man he's doing a lot like i didn't even know that turnbuckle spot when he was having a crowd saying he 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 and he ran up on Damien in the corner. Like I yeah. don't remember ever seeing that before. No, he's really never like you said, house show. And I agree with you, Pat. As far as when I'm thinking about it, if I'm in a championship match, I'm not doing any of that. Like right. If you you know what I mean, if it's a regular Monday, cool. But like championship, no. Nah, on a PLE. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm yeah, I'm not doing any of that. Like we we had fun with the intro. But after that, it's, I got to lock in. Like, yeah, so you hear that ding, ding, ding? Yeah. It's, right. Yeah. So that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, What are we rating this one? Uh, Pat, what would you rate it? I think I'm still going to give it a three. Okay. Um, I think both both competitors, like, it was a good match. They did. They both performed well. Um, <clears throat> kind of what they had to work with. And then the story aspect, Damian Priest had that kept the story going of you know not wanting help by pushing away the two guys at the end of the match when they're attacking Jay. Yeah. Um and then Jay is still kind of telling that story of like of trying to get that first single title. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a three. I like it. Yeah what do you think? I probably agree with Pat. I would probably say a three as well. Okay. On that one. I I'm gonna go three and a half just because I enjoyed I'm enjoying the the judgment day thing like I am enjoying the I want to prove myself and these fools these th- these guys are thinking we're just running it back like a game same game plan we've always had and he's like whoa like I'm not Rhea like I don't want any help I'm like treat me like Rhea Rhea never got help like Rhea for a while there Rhea you know Dominic would show up early on in her reign but after that she would just clean up you know what I mean. So I think he wants that, you know, that status, which doesn't seem like they're listening to. Um, Speaking right. of Dominic and Rhea, did uh, Dom get caught in 4K walking out of the locker room with a lift? We seen uh, that. No, right? That was, saw that? Bro, that's Triple H, bro. <laughs> Ain't that's nobody like, else would think. Like Vince would have been like, "You want a what in the background?" They don't give a damn about what's going on in the background, but he does <laughs> it, and everybody on Twitter talking about it. Yeah, he was getting caught in 4K. With that was, arm sling and, that, and that weird mustache. Bruh. <laughs> I don't blame him. If Liv came up to me, I wouldn't be, have a choice neither. Come on now. With a folded like a dang lawn chair. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, all right. Next, uh, we have the Women's Tag Team Championship match. We have Kabuki Warriors defending against Bianca and Jay Cargill. Uh, I'll give my thoughts on this first. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good match. Like, I thought... Um, Jade and Bianca obviously look like a legit tag team. Like, they look like, you know, a legit tag team. Um, and I thought he did his job, right? Like, what was it supposed to do? It was supposed to make Jade look good. And I thought she looked good for the most part. Um, and <laughs> I don't understand why y'all are wilding. Uh, and then that finish, that finish was fire. Um, and, uh, that The finish at the end was fire, so... Uh, I'll let y'all go. Since y'all have somebody thought, what's up? <laughs> um, so first of all, these, well, the Kabuki Warriors. I normally go to bat for them, but there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of mess ups in this match. A lot of miscommunications. However, there was a spot where they had it was Oscar and Kyrie, and they had Jade. And Kyrie absolutely smoked Jade with his back fist. Mm-hmm. And like it looked like it actually caught her. I was like, oh damn. Like there's multiple times where I was like, oh damn. Like uh Jade caught Kyrie with a clothesline. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Kyrie was supposed to duck and didn't duck in time. <laughs> and Jade just like <laughs> caught her. Like, right in the face. like that guy, yeah, bro. That Kyrie was dead. Uh, <laughs> she also Kyrie also came off the top. And I think Bianca was standing a little too close, and Kyrie got her like in the head. Yeah. On with the crossbody out to the outside, I was like, "Oh." Yeah. It just was like it was just very sloppy. Like it, it wasn't awful. Like, it wasn't an awful match. It was just sloppy in parts. 
Mm. Um, and then like Jade try to get Kyrie and uh, uh to do that the military press, but like put and get her and mm. finally just, like on her shoulder and like did a little thing. And then like they were laid on something like there was just uh, up until the end was just lots of uh miscommunications. We'll yeah. say didn't Kyrie try to pin? Uh, yeah, she I don't know. Yes. She wasn't even illegal. Yeah. Yeah, like Oscar wasn't even legal. Yeah, like, right. I mean, I think we need to have a conversation about the Kabuki Warriors. But I don't. So here's no, no, no. It, I don't. It was both sides, though. Like, I agree, it's both sides. But both the other sides. side has a very clear excuse. Kabuki Warriors. We've been saying this for years now. Like, so I don't. I think they. I at somewhere the the finish I think got miscommunicated because. Kyrie was legal and she went to pin. I think the referee was like, no, like that's not the finish. You're not supposed to pin there. Like that's not the spot we're going to. And mm. then that's when they did the arm bar thing. And then I'll randomly Bianca and Oscar in the ring and Bianca is an arm bar has the arm bar. One of the two. I'm like, what are we doing? Like yeah. you can still go to that spot, but keep going with this spot to where it doesn't look clunky. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I think a lot of it is is the 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 language barrier, but also like they're the style they do in Japan clearly in like obviously if you know wrestling, you know it's two different styles, so like even as long as they've been in there, they're still with certain people they're not it doesn't look as clean it always looks clunky, <laughs> and this was one of them. Because there's been times like when when Oscar and Charlotte go at it, like it's clunky, but it's not as bad. Like there's one or two, maybe this one. There's like three or four just in the like last fifteen minutes. I don't remember Kyrie being this this bad, and maybe I'm glassed over from NXT days. I don't remember, but I don't remember her being this bad. But oh, what do you think? I actually agree with Pat with some of this. I think mm-hmm. that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> I think we're about to say somewhat of the same thing yeah but it was sloppy yeah and my biggest gripe about this honestly was jay mm. like if you're gonna sell something sell it yeah like when she was getting like that you know that combination that they both do with the Hitting the back fist and the kick. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that was brutal. that Paul's selling was that in. was that was not good. Yeah. Then yeah. when they was that when that double arm bar when they was both Bianca and Jay was getting the arm bar. Yeah. Bianca selling the crap out of it. Jay just sitting there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, is this is she gonna tap? Is she even feeling this at all? Was it, right. is it all the way put in? Right. Like, what is happening? Mm-hmm. I think that's my gripe with Bianca is that she oversells too much. She's like Dolph Ziggler's at, at times. Like there was a point in this match where she's getting her ponytail pulled and she's like flailing around like she can't go anywhere or like she's trying to like pull back from them pulling her with her ponytail or whatever. And it's like, girl, you're doing too much. Just stand there and grab your ponytail and like have a little tug of war. Like you don't got to kick your feet and like well flail your hands and shit in the air like fucking sell it but just like pull your ponytail back and then like they're gonna pull you if this your the spot calls for you going to them like have them pull you because you can pull enough like you don't gotta flail your feet to like try to sell that they're pulling your hair like i can see they're pulling your hair <laughs> like yeah yeah but honestly i'd rather get that than you no sell a whole bunch of stuff yeah yeah that's true that's true yeah, because every time like they would hit her, it was just like, okay, is she like kind of be, trying to be like Andre the Giant where nothing fate, you know, you know if I think playing 2K where you hit Andre the Giant, it really ain't going to phase him? Right. I, I think she's still in a little bit of the AEW mode where it was like, and AEW was like, we're sending you chop liver in the ring and they're not really, anything they do to you doesn't affect you. It's like here, it's like, no, we're kind of, we're closer to equals than we aren't, you know. Um yeah. Like I want her to take more bumps, honestly. Yeah, she definitely needs to. 
Even in live shows, she needs to take more. She needs to learn how to take bumps, all that stuff. She isn't taking bumps in live shows. Yeah, they're gonna get her timing better because she's gonna. I thought she killed poor Kyrie. <laughs> and I, and I, I can't even say was it Kyrie was it not Kyrie's fault. Like, I, I think it was a little bit of both. Like Kyrie was supposed to duck. But oh, I think that, Jade came oh, yeah. too fast. That was an extra of both of them. Yeah, yeah, because Oscar <laughs> ducked. Oscar got out of the way. Yeah, if I, I don't know. If I'm producing a match, I want Jade and Nothing Kyrie to, to have the least amount of contact <laughs> at all as anybody. Like, I want those two to have least amount of interactions as possible. Um, I feel like they. You just saw, you know, that inexperience there. Yeah, and that sucked to see that on a PLE. Yeah, like I that. think huh? the better opponent. Would have for Jade, I think, would have been like a Candice LeRae or, or a, I don't know, somebody who has been doing it a while. Yeah. Like, obviously, like Natty's the like obvious go to for anybody new, but like, you know, if that makes sense. Like, somebody small that Jade can throw around and can make her look good, but also help her with timing. And and things like that. Yeah, I agree but with I, that. I'm, I I did like their double team moves though. Yeah, they're getting those better. Those yeah, I like those, especially. Oh uh, yeah, the one they did on Kyrie though, like it was a little, little messed they, up. Yeah, they need to work but on. It that. turned out well. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. her catching, uh, Jay catching was that Kyrie? She did that on. Her, is it what is what's her finisher called? Like the jaded or whatever. Yeah, jaded. Thanks, when she, like, I don't know why. It, it, does she do that every time? Like, I watch. Obviously, I don't remember her doing it at WrestleMania, and I didn't watch her much in AEW. Like, does she do that every time she does that finishing move? What? When she pins where she like has like them on her shoulder, like, and then has them up, and then like throws them and catches them, and then puts them in. The, uh, no, she. That was a. That uh, was different. Yeah. That was, that was different. Like I've never seen her do that. Okay, I was gonna say if she does that every time she does that for her finisher, it's you gotta no, because then she that. then she tried to jump on her and that's how she caught her. Yeah, yeah, something like yeah. that. Like I liked the match. It was like it was sloppy in spots. Now the only issue I really have about that, who is gonna take the title off of them? Thanks. Yeah, like, and they, they keep booking the themselves into a corner you know, with San these... Martino run. Yeah, yeah. It's they true. keep booking themselves in the corner with that the women's tag team titles. Unless somebody about to pull up Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah, I mean, I think I get a vibe that Jade and her are gonna like Jade's gonna turn on her or one of the, or maybe Bianca. I would have Bianca turn just because I think it'll actually mean something. And the fact that Bianca can now be healed and then Jade can. You know, get eat all the baby face love, but, but yeah, we'll see. Um, what would you guys rate this one? I'm I'm going two and a half. That's what I was going to say. I'm gonna go two. two. Not doing the women yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I giving the women a little lower score doesn't surprise me here. Um, <laughs> it was sloppy though. Uh, I can't even. Defend it. <laughs> I can't. And, and the, <laughs> this is not me. This, I love women's wrestling. It's my favorite type of wrestling. Braun oh, Pain's match okay. is my okay. favorite. All but... right. Okay. <laughs> Let's not pander. Let's not pander. But, uh, this all the match women? was not good. So I, I will say though, if I'm Triple H, I'm having an internal training camp. I'm calling for an internal training camp. I'm going. Okay, guys, we're killing it. We're doing our thing. We're the top women's wrestling division in the world. However, I'm seeing some stuff like t- there's stuff that we can control that I'm seeing is timing, finishes, communication issue. Like we don't have we all going to, to the performance center. We gonna have about a weekend of just cleaning all this stuff up because like we can't have this on the main roster. Like it's OK. It's NXT. OK, that's fine. Uh, you worked out the kinks there. But main roster like PLEs, we can't be doing that. Like that's nah. that, there's no excuse for that. Um, like and it could possibly get somebody hurt. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like we're putting people's bodies at risk, and we are trying to promote the women's division even higher. 
we can't do that if every match at the end people are pointing out botches every other two minutes. You know what I mean? Like the fact that we're having to have this conversation to me, if I'm triple H, I'm disappointed because I'm like, I thought we were a little past this. Like, but I think he's doing some, he's, I think he's doing work on the back end with the draft that I think will help also. But we'll talk about that. Um, all right. We have the main event. Cody Rhodes defending his universal title versus AJ Styles. I thought this was a really good match. Um, I thought these boys was cooking. Uh, despite the crowd, I thought they was cooking. And you could tell, like, sometimes you could tell if two dudes were independent guys at a time and, you know, because they do different stuff. Whereas WWE, born and bred, like, they do a match a certain way. Where this was, like, paying homage to New Japan and, like, paying homage to other stuff. You know what I mean? Um, doing moves we haven't seen in WWE much. Well, AJ does it a little bit every now and again. But, but you could tell, oh, okay, these are two independent dudes whose wrestling style was not built through the WWE alone. Um, so that's what I enjoyed. Um, I thought it was a really good, uh, really good match overall. I thought AJ looked good. Like, AJ didn't look – he didn't get squashed. He didn't get anything like that. Uh, and, you know, I'm not an AJ Styles guy, but the, he was cooking. Like, he was cooking, uh, especially to be 60 years old. The one that was cooking. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy AJ was uh, out here doing his thing, and, uh, you know, the rightful person won. So, um, L, what did you think about this one? Yeah, this was this was a good main event. Yeah. Um, did they go, like, 40 minutes? Yeah, they went a while. Well, was, I think it was, like, 36-ish. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. That yeah, because they they was they was going, and I was wondering, I was like, okay, this is not Roman wrestling, so how they gonna do all this? Right. But they pull up all some moves I never seen before, and mm-hmm. shout out to Cody. And I saw a, an interview with him, like not too long ago, that he takes every wrestler he wrestles, he takes something from them. Yep. If he's wrestled them twice. Yep. He took. Brock Lesnar's little uh I forgot what that move was called like Kamora Lock. Yeah, he took that yeah. from Brock, even yeah. though they couldn't say who it was. Yeah, they couldn't. But I saw that I was like, okay, he wasn't playing when he said that. Yeah. And all the other moves that was going back and forth. About time that AJ uh what was it the the 450? Yeah. Oh, off the top ro- like off the, the top rope, rope. not like a turnbuckle. Like yeah. he actually hit it because every time he winds up doing it for like the last few years, he always got need. Yeah, he facts. actually hit it this time, so that made yeah. me very happy. Yeah, and you know, outside in the, I always like that when they're about to get counted out, like the different ways they can do it when they both get in or one yeah. gets in. And I did like that part when they both at the same time got in at the same because it yeah. looked like I was like, okay, they're both in different spots on this on the floor. Right. But they wind up both sliding in at the same time. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But I like that match was pretty it was it was a good match, especially for the amount of build up they had for it, which yeah. was what, what two weeks really? Yeah. And they did a pretty good job with the at least like promo wise and like like I thought AJ did a really good job. Like he made it about, you know, their path of getting there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which, which I liked because it's like pro wrestling fans at this point kind of know the history between both of them. So, yeah. you know, it wasn't just, you know, normal beef, you know. Um, did I miss something? Was Cody the leader of the Bullet Club? For a small moment, there wasn't he? Because it wasn't it AJ. No, Finn. And AJ, it was AJ. And then it, it was, was Kenny. I thought maybe Cody was in between those two, but I it was, I know no, Cody was around because they jumped. They Kenny jumped AJ out of that when he went to WWE. He did, yeah. Then I was yeah. like, when Michael Cole said the leader of the Bullet Club, I was like, wait a minute, when that happened? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, at some point with when Kenny was the leader, they had like a match for who's the leader of the Bullet Club, and Cody won. Oh, okay. Because I was wondering, I was like, did I miss that? Yeah. And I think he then left for starting the AEW that's, yeah, that's process. That's when he started AEW, like, right after that. Yeah. yeah it must have been short. 
Um, Pat, what'd you think? Man, very much enjoyed it. Uh, two of my like my type of guys, yeah. my type of wrestlers. Like, I've been an AJ fan for years, and seeing that man at almost sixty years old <laughs> pull himself up on the top rope, do his four fifty. Like, it showed that he still got it. Yeah. Um. This new character, this new AJ, the like. I deserve this, so I'm gonna get what I deserve. What like no matter what, who get or whoever gets in my way, whatever. Love that he kind of did like a version of it in TNA, like towards the end. Mm. Um, but like this, it's one of his better ones uh, yeah. to me, other than like straight up baby face, like AJ um, and yeah. then Cody. Like just the way they both can tell a story in the ring. Obviously, Cody can tell a really good story on the mic in the ring. Um, AJ's promo skills of late have gotten better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the match just delivered, and it was the perfect match for Cody's first defense. It really was. Um, and then with the build up, it was a perfect person because there's still there's so much of a story that they could build it in two weeks and make it seem like it was a month build. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, like. And it, it, it never felt slow, mm-hmm. crowd or no crowd. Like it, it never felt slow. The pacing felt right. Um, it was just all around was was good. And I, I, I wouldn't mind if they went Cody AJ round two. Yeah, same. You know, it kept this going for for a little bit before uh, Cody's next opponent. Because that would I agree. be nice to see again. See if they can have if they're the the combination like a Cody and Seth, they can have two or three really good matches. Right. What's the next PLE? It's in Saudi, right? Yeah, but that's gonna be. I more think so. I think it's the on, King and Queen of the King Ring. Queen of the Ring, though. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I can see them running it back though, because you need a main event. I don't know if that's the King and Queen is gonna be the main event uh, of that card. It could be. I'm not sure. Usually but, is. Okay. I can, but I could see, you know, if they wanted to tag a main event on it, I could see them running it back. Um, but no, Pat, you make a good point. Like, it was really good. Um, like, to me, this was kind of a wrestling nerds type of match. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, they brought out some stuff that, like, you would have to know some back some back end knowledge before rocking into this one. Um, but no, yeah. Like, Cody... Like Cody impresses me every time because, like, like you said, like we just talked about with uh, Jay. Jay kind of just sticks with what he got. Boom, boom, boom. Cody's always like, "Oh, I like that. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna try that. You know what I mean? Or I like that move. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it once on a random show." And you're like, "Ooh, okay. That that switches it up. You know what I mean? You can't ever be like, I know exactly how Cody matches are gonna go. Uh, yeah. So I like that part, especially when um, he did that top rope Cody cutter. Bro, that was fire. Cause I was, going, I was like, "What you doing? What you going? Where you going?" Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. I feel like he just has a bag that he just goes. I'm gonna pull that out at a PLE just once, and I won't touch it again till Mania, or you know what I mean. And like, dude, so he, he might have the deepest bag in in the game right now. Honestly, to me, he does. If I'm a pro wrestler coming up, I'm watching Cody's matches because when he yeah. does moves, he does it. Based on the story he's trying to tell, right? It's not like we have this story. We build up, build up, build up, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, same moves I do in a match as I do in just a throwaway raw match, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. he he the moves he does are part of the story he's trying to tell. Like if he's coming in to whoop your ass, he's straight like punching you, kicking you. Like he's not doing all these cute moves. Like yeah. he's finding anything and everything he can to beat your ass. Whether whereas like if a throwaway Monday Night Raw match and he we're, we're just in there to to grapple here and there like that's what he's gonna do or like in this AJ Styles match like he was trying to prove a point mm-hmm. so he was doing stuff like and he knew he gave AJ the respect of I can't just do typical moves to yeah. take him out like I've got to up it a little bit right that's what and that's what I like most about Cody 
he he almost pays more respect. He puts the person over while wrestling them because mm-hmm. he's like, oh, okay, I can't just do the off the turnbuckle. I gotta, you know, I gotta make this really count, you know, and like that type of stuff. I love. and like like you said, like if I'm a young baby face, if I'm a young guy and I'm gonna be a baby face, I'm watching Cody like him selling the shoulder injury, but then fighting through it, like all that stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's textbook. How you would teach somebody in a book. That's how you do babyface work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But okay, I think this is probably best. This is best match of the night to me. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you? What would you guys rate it? I, I gave it a four out of five. I probably agree. Four out of five. It was. It was really close to a four and a half. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely. definitely say four. Yeah, it did pop me game, that like, it did pop me that after uh, right before I think Cody been playing too many too much two K because I feel like yeah. every time he's gonna do a crossroads, he did a taunt right before. Oh he yeah, <laughs> yeah. You gotta hit that taunt, baby. Get the, <laughs> he, the life like up. He's doing that like almost like he did the whoa thing. Yeah. Every both times I was like, okay, is this a is this new? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't. His bar wasn't. Quite filled here at a time. Yeah, you had to, had to get that extra bar. <laughs> <laughs> Getting in the orange. Uh, okay. Um, so, what would you guys, as far as like out of five, what would you give this PLE? I give it probably, I give it a strong three and a half for me personally. Um, leaning on the Bloodline Edition, Cody and um, Cody and AJ Street Five was really fun. Um, so I'd give it a three and a half. L, what'd you give it? I'll give it the same thing, uh, okay. basically because of the story. Yeah. Because usually something they cooked up in a couple of weeks, even though everything was pretty much predictable, yeah. but it led to a story that we don't know what the heck is about to happen. Right. Sure. So, yeah, I definitely would give it about a three and a half as well. Mm-hmm. All right. I agree. Uh, the two matches that carried it were the the opening match, the street fight, and the, and the main event. The uh, other ones were solid, um, but didn't really you know, like have that PLE feel to them. Um, mm-hmm. But the main event and, and opening matches carried hard. Yeah. Carried those that that show hard. So three and a, three three and a half is, is probably a good rating. And I like I feel bad for backlash because like it's one of those PLEs. It's just like, all right, guys, we got out. Of, we just finished Mania. You know, people are taking time off. People are healing their bodies from that run to Mania. Yeah. So like, these are the ones who are gonna have a match. If you're healthy, sign up. We'll yeah. put you in a story kind of thing and just like do what you got to do. Right. Um. I'm like I'm and I'm hoping at some point that it becomes a bigger thing where it's like, okay, it's the first one out of Mania. Basically, because, like, the way they look at it is WrestleMania is the, you know, finale. That's what's tying the whole wrestling year together. So, right. Backlash would technically be the start to that. So, you would yeah, think they're going to have a really big, yeah, like a really big opening pay-per-view to start the the new season type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Um, I definitely think last year's was better. Last year's mm-hmm. backlash in Puerto Rico was better. Um, but well, I also I, think injuries have something to do with that too, though. Yeah, that's true. We didn't know Seth, no CM Punk. They probably would have been in there too. That makes sense. And ain't no telling what Rhea would have been into. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You probably would have. Yeah, they, they didn't have the. Yeah, Becky wasn't on that. Yep. Does she <laughs> even have an opponent yet, or no? Not yet. I think so. I don't think so. Not yet. <laughs> Becky pulling Becky pulling a uh a Moxley. I think she was oh, supposed yeah. to be gone for a minute doing that book tour stuff still, and then she oh like, hey, yeah, she's so like, man, you you back over here. Title? I got it. She's just giving it to live. They gotta let that thing cook. The yeah, they gotta over. actually bring some prestige to it. Um, yeah, because they right. didn't do a good enough job. Rhea did, but I mean, nah. if it goes to live now, it's not like, if, nah. But, but live got you know Dom calling 4K, so we got to figure that out. 
Yeah, Liz you know? is more distracted by a man. You don't deserve the title. No, 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 uh, no, no. The man's mustache. distracted by Liv. No, no. Did you blame like him, it. though? Anyways. Uh, she fold me, then I fold her. <laughs> uh, I did want to, as we finish out, just want to mention some, uh, we just have the WWE draft. Uh, a lot of the criticisms for it, but a lot of people stayed the same. There's a few minor changes, but I think the biggest thing that came from it was the NXT call-ups. Um, I won't name all of them, but the main ones that I think will affect things are, we've already seen Melo, uh, who got called up to SmackDown, um, has really already made a mark. He had a really great match against Cody. He had a great segment with, um, with uh, Bobby Lashley this past week. Uh, and he's, you know, uh, put himself in the King of the Ring um, tournament. So, I think that's big. Uh, sounds like Ilya Dragunov is, has a match tomorrow or on Monday. Um, and we'll see, you know, the result of that. We're obviously recording this before that. But Dragunov, I'm expecting a big-time match. Um, I, want, I think he goes against Ricochet, I believe. Um, oh, and the, the King new of the WWE Rings. Speed Champion. Oh, yeah, the new WWE Speed Champion. That's right. I have not checked out Speed. I need to check it out. Um, I have no idea. I have not either. I yeah, I know he went against, I think it's Gargano. So I need to check that match out. Um, fast paced stuff. So Brown Breakers, obviously, kind of got caught up earlier, but obviously now with the draft, kind of made it official, official. Excited to see what he does on Raw. I was kind of surprised he's on Raw, but I like it. Uh, I like it. Um, I think the main thing, though, as we talked about the women's division, I think the big help of the whole thing is the women's division gets a little bit of an upgrade with Lyra Valkyria. Who can go? Who can actually wrestle? I think she's going to add. I don't know character wise if it's going to all work out, but I know wrestling wise she's really good. Uh, Kiana James, I think, could be a big time star. Uh, she showed her, she proved herself in NXT, and I think like star wise she can hang with like Tiffany Stratton as far as like in the ring good, but also like star. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And then uh, Blair Davenport, I think Blair is going to cook. Uh, Blair did some great stuff in NXT. She has some great like street fight matches with uh, Roxanne Perez and and others. So I think, yeah, I think Blair's going to cook. So I think those three will really help the women's division. And lastly, I just want to shout out my dude, DiJack. Finally, finally get called up as DiJack. You know, he got yeah. called up before as, what was that? T-Bar. Group called? Retribution? Was called? Retribution. Yeah, Retribution. So stupid. It was a good idea. They just poorly executed it. Yeah, that was yeah. Yeah, it was stupid. That was dumb. Yeah, he shouldn't have been a part of it. It could have been a good idea, but to me, he he should have been caught up with uh, Keith Lee. Um, the way they both was cooking together, and to me, Dodjack is bro mid card king. Like he, I don't know if he can be your main champ, but you need mid card guys where they can put on great matches no matter what. And he's one of those. Yeah, they better can... they better resign that dude. Oh yeah, I know. Hey, Keith Lee versus Gunter. Talk about big meaty men slapping meat. Yeah, I know. Where yeah. is he? Is he hurt? Keith Probably. Lee, he's an AEW. He's about to face Swerve for the championship after two not. years of that story. Wait, is he that. really about to face him? No. Dude, there's a Swerve's a champ. Oh, they haven't say, paid you, off no. that. Oh, no, no. They haven't paid off that story yet. So Swerve is a champ. It's only logical that Keith Lee comes back Keith for Lee a wrestled in a minute. He haven't wrestled in like months. Yeah. Just wait. That's where but he called out Christian last week. Keith Lee did. Swerve did. Swerve. Oh, Swerve. Yeah. Yeah. Which swerve, that confuses swerve. me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. This, your AEW title reign is about to be now. interesting. AEW yeah. literally has a story in front of him with Keith Lee and Swerve. Keith Lee, I think, is hurt. But well, well WWE showed Keith Christian Lee more them. than AEW has in the last like four months. That's true. He's a Hall of Fame. It, it was Can we talk about? Can we talk about Tony wearing a neck brace at the draft? <laughs> hey, man, I respect the gimmick. I respect the dedication. I respect the gimmick, but I don't respect what he said, though. Bro. Yeah. Compared to WWE to Harvey Weinstein, boy, that's a... Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. That's wild. Tony's, uh, you know, he's cracking at the seams. Uh, but, all right, fellas. Um, again, another backlash review. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts on the, on the PLE... Or, or, you know, any thoughts on our comments on the PLE, hit us up. Uh, let us know. Definitely 
glad to chat. Uh, I know Pat's ready to ready for all the smoke. We got to get L in the in the Facebook group. Uh, we're getting a lot more Facebook, a lot more wrestling banter in the in the Facebook group, which I'm happy about. It used to be all nerd stuff, which I'm glad, but it wasn't that many wrestling. Now we got more wrestling uh, comment, you know, comments on there, so that's always good. Uh, but yeah, we'll get L in there eventually. But uh, I, I should, make, say I should make this a gimmick. <laughs> yeah, I know you should. <laughs> if <laughs> like any disparaging words against me on the Facebook page, uh, you'll be hearing from my attorney. So <laughs> bring it to smoke, but bring it wisely. Yeah, it seems as if people are a fan of Pat. Well, at least Larry, shout out Larry. Of course, of course, Larry's shout out fan of Pat. But Larry's always the fan of the person with the most hot takes. That's just how Larry rock. But he uh, just knows I'm the only logical one on this podcast. And he rocks L, with L, L sometimes, yeah. I was like, L sometimes will bring the logic, and he knows just have these outlandish takes and views for stuff. I'm just trying to bring you back down to earth. Well, let's, somebody has to. That's that's actually yeah, shout, shout him out though on that one. Yeah, that's definitely. We saw true. the comment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to him. Uh, shout out to the love again. If you give us any feedback, we appreciate it. Uh, but until next time, we out. Yeah.